me show you how we can use the tone curve in Lightroom to adjust the exposure of our images and also give them more punch. So if you want to follow along, as always, you can find a link to download the raw file in the description of the video. And now let's begin. So this will be the image we are working on. And instead of going through the basic tab, adjusting the tonal sliders here, we are going to head straight into the tone curve right below the basic adjustments. Within the tone curve, you will have different options. We can work on the parametric curve, the point curve, and then we can target each channel. So red, green, and blue. What we want to do is we want to head into the point curve. We could also use the parametric curve but in here, we can only create points along this line and change them vertically, not horizontally. And that will cost us some flexibility. So let's not adjust this one. Let's head over into the point curve. On the horizontal line, we do have the tones going from the shadows on the far left over the midtones in the center and the highlights on the far right side. And the vertical axis kind of represents the brightness. So if I take the point for the deepest blacks and just pull it up, you can see these are getting brighter and brighter until they are pure white. Same goes for the highlights. If I pull the highlights all the way down, you can see we get a black image. With the default settings, we do have a straight line going from dark to bright. And in the back of this square, we can see the histogram, which will make it easier to target specific tones of the image. So let's think about what we want to do for this shot. Looking at the general histogram at the top, you can see this is a brighter image, but we still have a little bit of room left to brighten up this image even further right here. So let's do that. We need to create a point in the highlights and further brighten them up. Then I'm going to drag it up to make this tonal range brighter. And as you can see, I can go in every direction, not only vertically, like in the parametric tone curve. So this will give us way more flexibility. We can adjust things a little further. In this case, I'm going to go a little bit further to the left side and let's further bring up the brightness. So I think this is looking really good. We made the whole image brighter, but we didn't introduce any overexposure, so that's great. What you can see as well is the whole line is bending. This means as we push these brighter highlights up here, all tones all the way down to the darkest blacks kind of will be slightly affected. Of course, they are more affected the closer they are to this point, but everything will be pushed a little further, making everything a little brighter. This kind of helps creating a softer gradient as we push the exposure of all these tones of the image, but that's not exactly what we want sometimes. In this case, I do feel like the midtones of the image should pretty much stay the same. So what we can do is to create a point right here in the center part, and we are going to drag it down. So I think right around here is a good spot. Of course, not only the line for the highlights is changing, but also for the shadows. It's making them slightly darker. And I don't think that's a good look for this high key image, which we want to achieve. So the next step for me is to target the shadows of the image. And I'm going to do this by targeting the black point right here, which I'm then going to drag up. And this will make the darkest parts of the image brighter. I'm only carefully dragging it up a little bit because I really don't want to overdo it. But right at this point, we get a really nice soft look. Now, some tones might look a little bit strange. Right here in the tree, you can see it's kind of looking weird. So we can further fix that by creating a point for the deeper mid-tones right around here. So with this point, we made this curve just a little bit softer and in turn we get a more pleasing looking contrast for this image in the dark areas. And now at this point, let me turn off the tone curve so you can see the difference from before with our basic raw file to after. You can see the image has much more punch. The exposure looks much better. Still, we are not clipping anything in the highlights and we did get this really cool looking high key effect. What this, what this tone curve also does is it will affect the saturation of the image. And that's why we have this refined saturation slider down below. If I pull it down all the way, 
This is basically the tone curve added without changing the saturation of these colors. However, I think I like to boost the saturation a bit. So let's bring it up just to make the image a little more colorful. I think right around here is a very good spot. And that's pretty much how we adjust the exposure with the tone curve. Now, I still want to go into the basic panel and I want to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard. I just think it looks a little bit better with the softer look applied. What we want to do as well is we want to go through the presence tab real quick because I want to add a little bit of texture and I want to create a very dreamy look by dropping the clarity. And I'm also going to drop the dehaze quite a bit, which just looks really nice on this scene. Wonderful. This will also make the images slightly brighter, so be prepared to fix any clipping highlights when you drop the dehaze. Also, I want to bring up the saturation a bit. And at this point, I do think I need to adjust the white balance as well. Right now, the whole image looks a little bit cold. So I want to bring up the temperature just a notch, just introducing a little bit of warmth. And then we can already jump into the masking. Actually, no, let me show you the comparison from before to after so you can get a better idea of what we have already done here. The exposure is much better. The white balance and the overall colors are also looking much better. Now we can focus a little more on a few areas locally. Therefore, we are going to use the masking and there is not much going on. What I want to do, however, is to use a color range mask. And with the color range mask, I'm going to target the blues of the sky right here. Now this is looking like a proper selection. The edges between clouds and blue part of the sky might be a little too harsh. So I'm going to bring up the refine slider a little bit. And let's also subtract a linear gradient coming up from below like this. And what I want to do with this mask is to basically make the blue part of the sky darker by bringing down the exposure. This will give us some more contrast and just make the sky look more interesting. We can make it even darker by slightly bringing down the blacks. But that's about it. That's looking great. Then I also want to add some glow or sunlight coming in from the left side. Therefore, let's create a radial gradient. I'm going to make it nice and big like this. Make sure to place the center of this radial gradient outside of the image to get a more natural effect. And what I'm going to do in here is to bring up the blacks a lot. So this will make the shadows brighter and in turn it will create this kind of realistic glow effect. But we can further improve this again using negative dehaze. And again, I'm going to drop it quite a lot. This is looking really, really good on this scene. I almost want to make this area overexposed like this. Wonderful. And that's already it for the masking. Again, let me turn off the masks so we can see the difference from before to after. Especially the sky is looking much better now. And finally, we can also do a little bit of color grading. Since we don't have much colors in here, we don't really need to adjust the color mixer. And I also don't think we need to do split toning. What I want to do, however, is to go into the calibration tab. And here I want to bring down the blue primary hue, which will shift the blue tones more into the cyan color range. I think it looks great for this image. I even want to bring up the saturation to make these colors look stronger. So right around here looks perfect. And that's all there is to do for the color grading already. Of course, we also want to sharpen this image. So let's head into the details tab. And as always, I'm using the same settings. I bring the radius all the way down while increasing the details all the way up. And we want to add masking while holding down the Alt key. We can nicely mask out the sky, which doesn't really need any sharpening. Let's go with something like this. And then we can increase the amount of sharpening as well. Okay. Now you might already have seen a few of these sensor spots. We can clean them up in Lightroom real quick. So let's click on that remove tool. We want to use the heel brush and let's make sure to click on visualize spots. So we have an easier time seeing these sensor spots. And then I'm just going to paint over all these little dots right here. Let me also get rid of that bird. Hopefully it works with the heel brush. It does. Perfect. So here we have the finished image. I hope this little curves tutorial was helpful and interesting. If you have any questions or if you want to add anything, 
let me know in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.